dried off? <laughs> Barely. <laughs> Barely. <laughs> yeah. How long did it take to feel normal after that three and a half hour in that in, that, in those conditions? Oh, I mean, right after the game, you get the post game shower, and I just threw a sweatshirt on, and I was good to go once I got on the bus. So right after that, I was really fine. Um, I, I, myself, I was shivering uncontrollably for at least, I say, 30 minutes after the game. But uh, but after after a little while, uh, you felt better. It's funny, anytime I feel anything cold, it's like I'm having flashbacks now of, of being out there. No ice in your uh, soft drinks this week. Mm, oh, no, not, not none. David, you got two touchdown passes in the last two games. Are you, just, are you hoping that more come your way? Obviously, you are hoping more come your way, but how are you getting in position to make more touchdown catches? Well, I mean, it's all a play call thing. Everything is uh, goes through Coach Horton, so he he makes all the play calls, you know. And I think he does a great job of what he does. And uh, I mean, I got I've gotten pretty lucky the past few games that my number's been called, and uh, you know, I can't be thankful enough to the, all, all the other guys in the offense. I mean, I don't think I would be in this situation without Rashad or Chapman or the O line or any of the other tight ends too. Cause, I mean, a lot of guys go unspoken on our offense, especially the O line and. Uh, Parker Houston's out there every single play, you know, he's battling, you know, and uh, he doesn't get a lot of recognition that he should. But I mean, a lot of the guys on the team do a great job and, uh, you know, it, it's nice to be able to get in the end zone every now and then. David, do you ever feel extra pressure when you're so wide open? Yeah, that ball felt like it was in the air for about three minutes, you know, just looking at it, you know. Uh, it was, <laughs> it's one of those things, you know, they, they bid on the play fake and uh, it was wide open and one of those things, it's just like, <laughs> Just like you tell yourself, you like you just gotta make this play. You know the conditions are conditions are are bad. You know had to toss away the gloves at halftime because they're soaking wet. So you know just had had to go out there and just have to make plays in the time like that, especially when the game's on the line. Prior to Rock, you said you guys were getting whipped uh, up front. Now you had a good look at that kind of behind the front line of the defense, but at the beginning of the game they were running the die pretty effectively. Rock, you said you made some adjustments. Can you? I mean, what kind of adjustments can you guys make to, to slow down a, an attack like that? Or did you just have to play tough? Um, well, I, I think, I think uh, more than anything, we started playing, playing tougher. Uh, we started uh, really hun hunkering down. If you watch the first few plays, our, our, uh, our ends got double teamed and uh, driven very far back. And, and the problem was that they just, they just weren't getting low enough. And, uh, and uh, after, after we had the break, coach came in, talked to us, and just said, uh, we're not playing tough enough on defense. We need to we need to man up because because they can't keep uh, running the dive for five yards. That's that's what they run through. You got to stop the option from the inside out. And luckily we uh, we toughened up and everyone started to play a lot harder after the break. And and uh, we changed play calls a little bit, but for the most part we ran the exact same same stuff we ran in uh, before the break. Thanks to Coach Goss, you guys too. Uh, with Rashad Penny being in the national conversation, how much pressure do you guys have to do your job on offense and then on defense just to get him the ball? Well, I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's more pressure than usual. I mean, we're around Rashad every day. I mean, we know how good he is. And uh, really, we put pressure on ourselves each play just to make sure that we're doing the correct thing every single down. So I mean, the coaches are always honest to make sure we're doing the right things, and uh, I don't think it's just because he's gotten the national recognition that that we're starting to step up. I think it's just um, for these young guys and everything, everybody else in the offense is that everybody's starting to click and figure out what we're actually supposed to be doing, and you know we're advancing on that every every single time we play. So I mean, it just keeps getting better and better each game. I feel like. And and Rashad is a guy. He he doesn't he doesn't care. Uh, I mean, he cares about the national recognition stuff, but, he, but he's a team guy. He just wants to win games. And mm -hmm. I think that's how all of us on this team are. We just want to win games. And as long as we're winning, I, uh, everyone's going to be happy. Parker, Rocky described you as basically playing middle linebacker the other day mm -hmm. um, because of, of their offense. Um, do you kind of relish that role? Being able to hit people as much as you did the other day. Uh, yeah, it was it was a it was a fun experience. That's for sure. Especially being in the middle of that triple option, uh, a bunch of guys come in trying to trying to cut you and do everything else. And uh, it, it was a fun experience. I could do it a little bit uh, throughout throughout some games, but in, in that game in particular, I, I got the opportunity to do it the whole game, and it was a it was a really fun experience being in there. And, and uh, 
and I was down there with one of my best friends, Ronley. Me and, me and Ronley were roommates, so so we uh, we had a good time being in the box together and uh, making some plays. So it was a uh, it, it, it was it was a good opportunity being down there. So uh, hopefully uh, hopefully I'll have more chances in the future to. Uh, Play some linebacker. Is it, is it one of those games that kind of brings you back to high school football in some ways that you get to do a little bit of everything rather than be so specialized? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely. Uh, in, in high school, I, I did it all. I played, I played receiver. I played, uh, you know, I played safety. I played linebacker. So yeah, kind of, it kind of did remind me of that because in high school, I was uh, my senior year, I played middle linebacker almost the whole time. So it, it, it reminded me a lot of that, and uh, it was, it was just fun, and it was just. You know, for me, it was one of those games that just, it just reminded me, especially when it was raining, it just reminded me of backyard football, just just get to the ball and make a play. Parker, the, the thought, the fact that you guys are 4-0, undefeated, ranked, uh, how much of a target does that put on your back and how much does it motivate Northern Illinois to knock you guys off? I think it's definitely motivation. I uh, We were talking about it just the other day uh, at my house, that, that top 25, it's it's, it's recognition, but at the same time, it, it is a target. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a, a warrant for your arrest or something like that. You know, <laughs> everyone's, everyone's coming for you uh, when you have that top, tw- top 25. So, so Northern Illinois is definitely going to want to knock us off, especially after they knocked off Nebraska uh, two weeks ago, and they're coming off a of bye week too. So they're going to have a lot of motivation coming in here. There's no doubt about that, and they're, they're a really uh, good athletic, uh, physical team, and. Uh, and uh, we, we, we can't overlook them. We can't overlook anyone on our schedule because uh, y- y'all know I- any given Saturday, uh, anything can happen. You guys have been through chicken pox now, through the, the lightning strike, through the blackout. Is this as weird a start to the season as you can remember? And has it grown, grown you guys closer in any ways? Well, I mean, I don't think a lot of things, I think, get over dramatized a lot of the times, especially like the illness part of it. I don't think it was that serious. But uh, I mean, the delay and like another delay the next game. I mean, yeah, it's pretty weird. It's pretty different. You don't really see that many things. But uh, in those times, you know, it kind of shows you what kind of team we have. And uh, for us to be able to go from not playing well at all at the beginning of the game to turning it around after that 85 minutes or however long we're in the locker room. I mean, I think it shows what kind of coaching staff and what kind of team we have, especially that uh, that we can go in and just turn it around like that. Because, I mean, we, we did not play well at all on either side of the ball in the first that first quarter and a half. You know, and to be able to go and turn it around for the rest of the game is pretty nice. With each game this year, it seems like we've seen something that the program hasn't accomplished in 30 or 40 years, whether it's been done. Power fight team on the road, or winning when you're ranked, or starting off 4-0. Do you guys get a sense of the historical path you guys are on, or are you guys just down to the I mean, we're really just focused on, you know, just being 1-0 and each week. I mean, all that stuff comes with it. You know, it's really cool. It's really cool to see that stuff happening. You don't really know about all that stuff during the week when you're going, um, especially when you're just trying to prepare for practice, you know, just trying to get mentally ready because we have a lot of stuff we have to learn throughout the week to get ready for each team. And so just to uh, just to be 1-0 and each week, that's our goal at the beginning. And then after the game is when we see all of these different things, you know, it's like, oh, you know, that's pretty cool that we accomplished this, this, this goal of ours, you know, that we've never really had apparently before. But, I mean, every, every week it's, the goal is just to win. So that's really all we're thinking about. Parker, I, was a, I thought Northern Illinois did a good job offensively against you guys last year. Now, granted, you jumped ahead 28 to nothing. Maybe you guys softened up on defense a little bit. But they got a lot of yardage through the air on the ground. Uh, I know you and Naeem were probably sharing time a little bit more at that time. But how much from that game can you take into this game? And, and what did you learn from them? Uh, <clears throat> I think we can take quite a bit from that game. I mean, they have a lot of uh, – same starters, this same quarterback, but uh, he he's he's hurt. I'm not sure if he's going to be starting against us, but same quarterback, uh, same running back. So I think there's a lot of things to take away. We know what kind of guys we're dealing with. They we had played them last year, so uh, so I think in a sense we're we're not going to be super surprised by by anybody they have because we played them last year. Uh, but I, I think it helps us a lot as far as Coach Long coming up with the game plan, too. He knows what they like to run against us, what kind of schemes they're going to be looking for against us, what worked last year and uh, what didn't work last year. So he's going he's gonna to have his eye, eye out for all that stuff. And uh, I, I, think it, I think it benefits us quite, quite a bit. Has he ever sent in a defensive signal to anyone? And, and has anyone in the defensive huddle ever gone, 
What's he talking about? Really? We're going to do that? <laughs> Uh, just kidding, basically. I mean, you guys <laughs> listen to him pretty much explicitly when he sends in a signal? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just like, run it. Let's run it, you know. So, uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, we trust Coach Long. He's, you know, he's been doing this for years. He's one of the best defensive coordinators uh, and head coaches out there. So uh, we're trusting, trusting whatever he's key calls. With all your success, have you guys heard much from alumni or former players, and how do they reach out to you this I mean, I talked to uh, some of my buddies that play in the NFL now, like Calvin. I mean, he was one of my roommates last year, so I talked to him every now and then. You know, they just reach out and support, you know, like through Twitter, just texting, you know, like, hey, great game, stuff like that. So, it's, I mean, it's really nothing crazy. You know, it's the guys you've played with for a while, you know, for four years of my life, you know, dealt with, dealt with some of these guys. So, I mean, we've, we all just talk to each other most of the time and, uh, you know, just go from there. That's really it. I mean, um, you just always see stuff on social media. That's that's really about it. I mean, it's, I don't I don't think it's anything like out of the ordinary or anything crazy like that. But. Could you see them rushing the field again? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be quite the tradition. <laughs> <laughs> David, does Parker have the best beard on the team? He has one of the best beards. Yes, I think that. I think I'm a close second, or maybe third. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes from there. You look like you have a little bit to go. Yeah, I got a little bit to go. You know, start a little bit after him. You know, I'll keep going from there. I don't know if y'all saw David's beard a few years back, but it was <laughs> it was way better than what mine is right now. It was long. It was real long. You going for longer? I uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going for. I'm just uh, you know we'll see where it takes me. Are you an Eric Weddle fan? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit of an Eric Weddle fan. I mean, not a huge Eric Weddle fan, but I, I know of him uh, when he played for the uh, Chargers for a little bit. But uh, I think he's playing, he played for Baltimore right now. But, uh, yeah, I mean, not, not a huge fan, but I do know of his beard and all that stuff. <laughs>